Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, part two of our children's folding rocking chair. Well, although I never intended for this to be a multi-part build, it has become one. And that's okay because I would rather make it a multi-part build as opposed to cutting information short for you guys. So without any more talking, let's get into it here with continuing on with the build. Well, while we're waiting for that backrest to dry up, we're going to move on with making some of the other pieces. And these are a couple of support pieces that help the chair fold. These are one and three quarter inch wide. We're still working out of the three quarter inch thick pine, and these are seven and a quarter inches long. So the first thing that we're going to do is near the ends of the piece, we're going to place a center mark. So half of one and three quarters is seven eighths of an inch. So we'll just place that mark at each end, just like that. And then we're going to do the same thing from the end of our piece, right along that line at seven eighths of an inch. Now what this is, is the axis of our circle, or it's the center point of our circle, because what we're gonna do now is take a center punch, punch those two holes, and then set our compass to the outer edge, and we're going to draw a radius at each end. And we'll be taking our compass, set our radius here with the edge of the board, like that, tighten it down, and then draw our curve. Now we're gonna need two of these pieces. So I'm gonna mark out the second one and then we're gonna take it over to the scroll saw and we're gonna cut them out. And then the same thing like we did before, take them over to the uh, belt sander and clean up our arcs to make sure that they're nice and neat. And then I'll come back and see you. Okay, well now that you have those two parts roughly made, they're sanded, they're shaped, all that, there's more to do to them. We're gonna to get to that in just a bit because the next pieces that I wanna make are the chair uprights and the runners. And the problem that I'm facing here is that I have these templates that I made years ago and how on earth do I describe to you how to make these shapes? I can't. There is no amount of dimensions that I could give you that would ever show you how to make this. So by the time this airs, I will have a PDF available. Um, and all you have to do is let me know that you want it. Drop me an, a message on the channel's Facebook page, and I will be glad to send the PDF your way. Uh, I, I don't want anything for it. Free of charge. Have fun with it. Uh, guys, so we need two of each of these and really all I can tell you to do here is um, I'm just going to lay this out, I'm going to trace it on the boards and then I am going to uh, cut them out on the scroll saw, shape them on the sander and then we'll carry on from there. So we'll trace out the first upright. And you remember, you're gonna need two each of these. I'm not gonna bother with sanding or cutting too far outside the line. Around the curves I might to make them clean, but I'm pretty confident that I can follow the pattern as closely as I can to get it just right. Now here, I've also got some places for holes to be marked. Now in my original template, these holes were marked for, for screws in order to, um, to mount the backrest. That is no longer necessary uh, if you've done the mortise and tenon. So, but we will mark this hole here. 
and that hole is for a half inch through hole. We'll get to that after. Just for simplicity's sake, and to keep the markings the same, you now want to reverse this template and mark out a second one here. Um, so I'll do that in just a bit, but as well, we also need our runners. Same deal goes here that we're gonna mark it out, trying to get the best bang for our buck in the stock. And we will mark our holes here for our half inch holes. So I'm gonna mark these out and then I'll see you over at the scroll saw. Well, I've changed my mind on the method and I think I'm gonna go with the bandsaw here. It'll just give me a lot more wiggle room to play with it and uh, a lot more ease of cutting. So it's up to you, jigsaw, bandsaw, scroll saw, whatever you like. Let's get these cut out. Well, here we have our two uprights of the chair. And the next thing that we want to do is these holes that we marked down in the bottom here, we're going to drill a half inch through hole in both of them. Once we get that done, we are then going to take that 1 16th round over all the way around the perimeter on both sides and then give each piece a good sanding. And while you have that half inch bit installed, these pieces that we made earlier, our little support pieces, our connecting pieces, pick one side of it, it doesn't matter which, and drill a half inch through hole in that as well. And we'll do the same thing on the other piece at one end. Well, we're gonna have to put these two pieces aside just one more time while we turn our attention to our two uprights because now it's time to place our uh, back rest in here. And for that, we need to mark our mortises. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our back rest, I'm gonna hold it up in place where I want it to be and I'm simply gonna trace out our tenon onto here so that I know where to cut it. I'm gonna take it over to the scroll saw, treat it as an interior cut, cut them out, and then carefully shape and, uh, and fit them until they're a nice tight fit. And then all we have to do is glue our backrest together in, uh, in our chair upright pieces. The scroll saw is really no different than any other tool when it comes to making sure that your blade is square to your table. And before you start cutting these mortises, you really want to make sure that that blade is perfectly square. Otherwise, you're going to have poor results. So now with the number seven blade, we're just going to very carefully cut just shy of the line here. Um, and then we can dry fit it and see how we do and see how well it goes together and tune it from there. And once you get them both cut, just do a test fit and then adjust from there. And once you get your mortises cut, a dry fit will tell you how things are going together. So if you're happy with the fit at this point in time, then you can give both of these uprights a really good sanding. We've already given the backrest a sanding. 
sand the uprights and we can glue this all together. Now you'll want to be careful to make sure that you get a good coating of glue around on the shoulder to make sure you get a really good tight fit, a tight connection and a good glue joint as well. Clean up your squeeze out guys. Don't leave it there. It turns a beautiful job like this into a complete hack job when there's glue oozing out of the joints and dry glue all over the place. So I'm going to glue this up and I'll see you when I get that done. Well, at this point in time now, we're going to turn our attention to the runners. And on the inside face of each one, if you remember, we marked from the template some holes here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to center punch these and each one of these four holes is going to receive a half inch Forstner bit hole, so a flat bottom hole that is going to be half an inch deep. So we'll take those over to the drill press and we'll get those drilled out. And with those four holes drilled, just like we did with the other pieces, we're going to route a 1 16th inch round over all the way around the perimeter on both sides of each one of the runners. We're now going to turn our attention back to these pieces here. And what we need for these pieces is on the opposite side of where we did our half inch three hole or through hole, we're going to need a three eighths diameter hole that is a half an inch deep in each one of these pieces. And now we can put these two pieces aside and we can finish up with the last piece, which is one that we started earlier, which would be the seat. Once we get that done, it's time for the assembly. So let's turn our attention now to the seat. Well, the very first thing that we want to do to the seat is we want to take our 1 16th inch round over on both sides of our seat and round off these square edges here. Only the square edges. We're not going to do this area out here. We're going to do something different there. So we'll get this round over put on and then I'll come back and see you. Now I know that with the bearing it isn't going to get right into those corners, but that's okay. We can get in there with a little bit of hand sanding and touch that up afterwards. But what I want to do around the rest of the perimeter here is I want a quarter inch round over. The little person's legs are going to be against that and we want that to be a little softer of an edge than just a one eighth round over. So let's put a quarter inch round over all the way around the front and the side edges here on both sides of our seat. Well, with the routing done and the sanding done, there's only one more thing to do here, and that is on this corner right here, three quarters of an inch in and centered on this board, we need to draw or drill rather a three eighths diameter hole that is going to be one and a quarter inches deep. So now it's time for assembly. In these shorter pieces here, what I've done is I've taken a piece of dowel here. This is walnut dowel, three eighths of an inch, and I have glued it into our piece where we drilled that three eighths of an inch, half inch deep hole. Now this um, piece of dowel is an inch and a half long. So the first thing that we're going to do is I've got some of this wax -a -lit. Um, you can just use paste wax if you like. It really doesn't matter. But I'm just going to put some paste wax on here, or a wax lid in my case. And all this is for is a little bit of lubrication because this is going to be a moving part. So we'll just take that there, just like that. Don't need a lot. And the 3 8 holes that we drilled in our seat, that is going to get installed right in there. You can hear that's kind of a squeaky tight fit, but don't worry, that wax lit will lubricate that just fine. 
Got a little bit of squeeze out on the wax lit, which I don't want, so I'm just gonna take that out of there. All right, and we'll do the same thing with our other one. Just give it a little coat of wax lit. Eventually, this is going to wear, so it won't be as squeaky. The more the chair is uh, taken apart and, and fold it down sort of thing, um, it will eventually wear the parts down and allow them to fit uh, much looser and easier. All right, so we'll just insert, insert this into the other side of our chair like that. Well, that is our seat assembled. That's it. So the next piece that we're going to need is we need two dowels. And these dowels are going to be 11 and a half inches long each. And what we're going to do is pick a runner. It doesn't matter which one. And we are going to glue these half inch dowels into the holes that we drilled for them. I'm going to put a little bit of glue in there, a little bit around the side of the dowel, and we'll just glue it in place. And of course, once again, be sure to clean up your squeeze out for that. So a little bit in the hole, a little bit around, and then we'll glue it in place. Well, this is where it gets a little tricky in that we need to slide these two pieces together. Can you see how that goes in there like that? And once we get that slid in there the way that we want it, we need to arrange these so that the front of our runner will slide through onto the uprights of our back support. And our small pieces with our 3 8 dowel in it, that will get slid over the other dowel. Sorry for getting in the way of the camera. A little awkward. There we go. Just like that. And once you get those aligned all the way down, You want to make sure that you've got them aligned and then the dowels will come up through these holes as well. I've got a little bit of squeeze out there on these bottom dowels and I don't want it to interfere with our chair. So there we go. Now we'll just slide this down, line up these holes with our dowels just like that and like this. There we are. Just need a little bit of persuasion. There it is. Just like that. And then this one the same. We'll just hammer that down. Get it lined up in our second hole. A second set of hands would be helpful here. There we are. We finally got it on there. All right. So, now that we have that done, a little bit of glue onto our dowels, just like this, and maybe a little bit in the hole. You want to watch for squeeze out here, because you don't want to glue the chair together. And then we will put it on our dowels like this. And once you get that done, we'll sit it up and clamp it together. And there you have it. A children's folding rocking chair. Guys, this project is a ton of fun and it can be done either with hand tools or power tools or a combination of both or whatever you like. It's just a fun little project that really doesn't take much material. It doesn't take that much expense, but honestly, it's a great little project. Folding this chair up could not be simpler, and it's all a matter of just lifting up the chair seat, and the rest of it kind of collapses down on itself. Um, it's not difficult to fold up, but I will caution you, do not get your little ones to fold it up. 
do not let them get their little fingers pinched in there underneath the seat and the seat support. Um, folding it really is only for storage and in all honesty, if you don't want to take that chance on having them nip their fingers and storage isn't an option or isn't a, a problem for you, then make the thing solid. Make it completely put together where it doesn't fold up and then there's no worries of that. Why did I choose pine? Well, for starters, I'm probably going to paint this. Considering it's for my granddaughter, I don't think she's going to want a little pine chair. I'm thinking she's going to want a little pink chair. So, it'll probably be painted. And, well, pine takes well to paint after you prime it and knock off all of the raised grain. It takes paint very well, so hence the pine. As well, it's a weight factor. Pine is a light wood, and that little girl is going to be dragging that chair all over the place. Well, you don't want a heavy chair for, you know, for them to drag around. Now, if you wanted to, you could make it out of walnut, maple. You could choose whatever you want, mahogany, cherry. Choose whatever wood you want. If you want to make this out of super hard woods instead of pine, then make it out of hardwood. It's up to you. It's your project. You are the one that is going to have to live with what it is that you've made. Guys, this has been a great little series. I really hope that you've enjoyed it. There's a lot of processes here and it is really it's honestly just a fun project. It really, really is. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. I want to thank you for stopping in at the channel today. I really hope you've enjoyed the content. And even more, I hope that you're going to join me next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.